Take a break from your busy schedule and join Harold Sala for Guidelines, a five-minute commentary on living. Haste is the parent of nine-tenths of our mistakes. Do you believe that? If you question that, then think back about some of the wrong turns in life which you took, decisions you made without thinking through the consequences. Those panic-driven decisions are the choices which we live to deeply regret. Of marriage, we sometimes say, marry in haste, repent in leisure. That means rush into a marriage because you are not taking enough time to be sure of what you're doing, and you may have a long, long time to regret your decision. Some people, of course, are procrastinators. They will wait as long as possible before deciding. Queen Victoria of Britain was such a person. She would wait as long as she could before making a decision. Then she would finally decide. The opposite, of course, is the individual whose decisions are panic-driven, and decisions thus made are usually wrong ones. Dick Johnson tells of such a woman, having been diagnosed as having cancer, an acquaintance of his decided that she would rather end her life than face the trauma of radiation and chemotherapy. Driven by panic, the woman very sadly took her own life. But what is even a greater tragedy, says Johnson, is that three days after the funeral, a letter of apology arrived from her doctor's office saying that he had been misinformed by the medical laboratory who diagnosed her as having cancer, and the lab's diagnosis was incorrect. She didn't have cancer after all. Are you confronted with a situation right now and you're not sure what to do? Do you feel panic-driven? Then the wise words of Dr. F. B. Meyer should speak to your heart. Meyer, who learned personally that panic has pitfalls, wrote this, Never act in a panic, nor allow anyone to dictate to you. Calm yourself and be still. Force yourself into the quiet of your closet until your pulse beats normally and the scare has ceased to disturb. When you are most eager to act, that's the time when you will make the most pitiable mistakes. Do not say in your heart what you will do or will not do, but wait upon God until he makes known his way. As long as that way is hidden, it is clear that there is no need for action, and that he accounts himself responsible for all the results of keeping you where you are. When you feel panic-driven, the following guidelines will help. Guideline 1. Back off from the situation and do nothing until you have laid the entire matter before the Lord in prayer. Following the death of his sweetheart and fiancé, Joseph Scriven wrote, Have we trials and temptation? Is there trouble anywhere? We should never be discouraged. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Can we find a friend so faithful who will all our sorrows share? Jesus knows our every weakness. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Guideline number two. Get competent advice. Remember, panic-driven decisions never include people who may say, Look, this is not so bad after all. Have you thought about this? Panic produces a paralysis of good thinking. So listen to the counsel of others. Guideline 3. Put your options and their consequences down on paper in black and white. Writing things helps you clarify your thinking. Only then are you in a position to make a decision. But what if you follow these guidelines and you're uncertain? Wait on the Lord. He will show you. Panic decisions are always regrettable. You've just heard Dr. Harold Sala with Guidelines, a five-minute commentary on living. If you would like to listen to the program again, download a copy, subscribe to our e-commentary, or view other resources visit guidelines.org. We would like to hear from you, too. You can email us at info at guidelines.org. That's info at guidelines.org. Thanks for listening, and we invite you to join us again for the next edition of Guidelines. Guidelines.